This is the Inquisition. A dusty old ruin filled with battered soldiers. If you shut your mouth and open your eyes, you'd see that the Inquisition is our one hope. Now, what did they make down here, and what can I make? I've walked away from too many burning buildings for one lifetime. This place, though, it'll be all right. It's Inquisitor now, isn't it? That'll take some getting used to. You think it's strange to say. It's stranger to hear. Don't let it go to your head. We need you level. Everyone just got a big, hard reason to hate Corypheus. And we already did, but we didn't have a name. You're the surprise, not him. We left in a hurry, but you got into your old place. Save anything? Family ammo. It's as stupid as it sounds. It's good to be back at work. How is this place shaping up as a forge? Better than Haven ever could be. Not the way I wanted an upgrade, but ever forward. You've got it all up and running. Your basics, like always. There's space here for... I don't know what. This place was built for something big. It'll be a job to fill in. I'll be back later. I'll be here. I've made some inquiries into the Imperial Court. The sooner we deal with the threats to the Empress, the better. The political situation in the Empire is dangerously unstable. It will complicate matters. Everything in the Empire complicates matters. It's the Orlesian national pastime. Turn your nose up at the grand game if you like, Commander. But we play for the highest stakes, and to the death. The Court's disapproval can be as great a threat as the Venatori. We must be vigilant to avert disaster. Exactly what do you mean? How is it more dangerous than usual? The Empress is in the middle of a civil war. Her cousin, Grand Duke Gaspard, seeks to take her throne by force. Leliana reports that a group of elves has been sabotaging both armies, drawing out the hostilities. Orle holds Tevinter at bay. All of Tedas could be lost if the Empire falls to Corypheus. Selene is holding peace talks under the auspices of a grand masquerade. Every power in Orle will be there. It's the perfect place for an assassin to hide. Does Selene know about the threats against her? Can we send word? I've sent messages to the Empress, but it's impossible to know if she's received them. I'll arrange for an invitation at your discretion, Inquisitor.
Let's see what we have. an extensive library on the history of forbidden magic. It's back there, uh, somewhere. I, I, I think I haven't been able to turn my head to look for two centuries. to the Lady Ambassador. Her ancestor visited the Emporium in the Blessed Age. I sold her a candle mounted with the severed hand of a first acolyte of Razakiel. I wonder, do the Montilliers still have it in their possession? I should like to see it again. Handle the merchandise with care. Watch your step. We received a shipment of invisible nuns the other day. No accounting for taste. <laughs> Would you consider allowing me to acquire your and <laughs> after your death, of course.
so, Inquisitor. It is Inquisitor now, right? Remember that war we talked about stopping? Full of little baddies I can stick with little arrows. That's not a friggin' archdemon, is it? Draste, what does step in? I've apparently been through a lot. But yes, Corypheus was a surprise. No, a surprise would be, oh, I stepped in dog shite. No one says, oh, a Magister God monster, I'm surprised. Impossible things aren't surprises. The ancient thing trying to kill us seems pretty real. Don't get me started. Oh, wait, too late, right? A magister who cracked the Black City. It's a hazy dream, right? I mean, if it's real, real, then the seat of the Maker? Real thing. A seat needs a book, so the Maker? Real thing. Fairy stories about the start and end of the world? Real things. It's too far, isn't it? I just want to plug the Skyhole rubbish so I can go play. You joined to help the little people caught up in this. But do you believe or not? In Andraste? Of course. But you doubt what you're seeing and hearing. It can't be true, true. Even fanatics don't want to be this right. Look, I have arrows. I can make this Corypheus believe in those. Good enough? Please be good enough. Keep calling it nonsense. That perspective will keep the Inquisition grounded. Oh, I can do that. Sure could use a few more people shouting no. We fight, the bad things go away, everyone calms down, and everything goes back to normal. A nice, well-paid normal. You're starting to not sound completely crazy. I know, scary, innit? So bring them on. But first, food. I'm starving. Inquisitor, huh? Well, you've got the fortress for it. Speaking of which, when you've got a second, there's something I want to show you. What did you want me to come see? Here, come on. I'll show you. Why am I dressed like this? You'll see. Come on, it'll be worth your time, I promise. Evening, Iron Bull. My merc band just joined up. Tanner, I'm from Jader. Well, near Jader. Mira, I was guard captain for Lady Pendel. Signed on after shit blew up at the Conclave. Share a drink? Who's your friend? This is Grim. She doesn't talk much. Huh. So, you ready to kill some demons? Or Venatori, or whatever that Corypheus asshole is? This isn't just about killing. We're helping the Inquisitor save the world and build the next empire. The Inquisitor isn't a god. She's just a woman trying to do the right thing. Well, long as I get paid, I'm happy. That's why I signed up. I just couldn't spend my whole life on a farm. Needed to live a little, you know. What about you, Mira? Why'd you join up? I thought you were serving some noble. I saw what happened at Haven. The Inquisitor staring down that monster and his archdemon. I don't sing the chant of light as much as I should. But you can't see something like that and not believe. Well, Grim and I should find our tents. Thanks for the drink. I know every soldier under my command. You don't have that option, but a few faces might help. You made it sound like you didn't like the Inquisition. People don't always tell the truth when you're polite. You've got to poke them a bit. But those two soldiers might think you're an asshole. So? 
I knew some of the soldiers felt like that, but to actually hear it... It's hard to be just an idea sometimes. That's all you are to most of them. It's why you could stand right in front of them without being recognized. You've got a good army coming along. Remember that, no matter what comes next. Scout Harding. Your worship. Shouldn't you be out there, scouting? In a bit. We're in Skyhold for supplies and a change of personnel. Not me, though. Indispensable. <laughs> so, who's Scout Harding, really? Me? Oh, I'm no one. Lived near Redcliffe all my life. Herded sheep for my neighbor. When the Inquisition came through my village, I helped by telling them everything I knew about the area. Then I signed on. Wanted to see the world before it was swallowed up by... that... thing out there. What's been going on? Sister Liliana glanced at me today. I think she's gonna have me killed. I should go. Inquisitor. And you are? The bartender, Cabot. Just the bartender? You were expecting... I was expecting the same face from Haven. It's not a hereditary profession. I think Fleesa... what was it? She joined the Chantry? I don't understand the type, but that's her business. So... So... What's the current mood? Turgid. Where did you study? I assume you're trained. In bartending? I'm no alchemist. You mix the bottles that don't taste like nug and you pretend to listen. I suppose I trained at home during feast day family visits. My specialty is ale. Old Antivan recipe. The secret is ale. You're a bit of a hard ass. Why are you here? And if I could fight, I'd be in a helmet. If I was a mage, I'd throw fire. And probably be dead. But I can't do anything. Just like the hundreds of people who can't do anything. Who make sure the thousands who can do something, can do it. Besides, if you know a safer place than your castle, do share. What's the word out there? There's a vigil for the dead later. I'll be closed. As you were. Inquisitor. Inquisitor. That's got a good ring to it. We're happy to be here, Your Worship. You need anything, let me know. Can we talk about the Bull's Chargers? Best company you'll find from here to the Anderfells. In my time with the Chief, we've gone up against everything from bandits to magic trees. We're expensive, but you'll never doubt we're worth it. Want to know anything in particular? Do the Chargers specialize in anything from a tactical standpoint? 
Bull doesn't want us large enough to work as an army. We're better as shock troops to skirmishers. We've got archers for heading enemy infantry, Dalish with more archery, and Skinner and her people on the flanks. Rocky handles fortifications and traps, and Stitches keeps us all fighting. They mostly hold back. I'll lead the frontline fighters with Grimm, and the chief goes wherever he can hit something. Are there rules for how mercenaries operate? If you don't want some noble to treat you like bandits, yes. There's also a code of conduct most companies hold to. Keeps things civilized on the battlefield. We accept surrenders for ransom from mercenaries, nobles, and soldiers wearing the Lord's colors. Our prisoners are treated well, injuries tended. We'd want the same for any of ours who got captured. You said something about everything from bandits to magic trees. I'll admit to some curiosity. Right. Sylvans. That's what Dalish called them. Apparently spirits can possess trees, too. Some noble in the Dales, and they really don't like it when you call them Dalish nobles, had a haunted forest. His family had abandoned the land, but he wanted it back. The chief bought us all axes, and in we went. Between the axes and the torches, the Sylvans weren't too bad. Worst part was the squirrels. We'll talk later. We are assembling quite the influential list. I hope I can help somehow. Maybe cleaning? Oh, Inquisitor, I, um, I joined. Sutherland, your worship. I saw some bandits, so I came to warn people. I'll let your warriors know and then stay out of the way. Did you hear the music? Yes. Worship. I'm serving now, in a different way. <laughs> so, this is Skyhold. Come, let's walk the ramparts. I want to examine our fortifications. We'll be able to see Corypheus coming from miles away. On the other hand, that means he can see us from miles away. Let him come. I swear I'll take the Twister Bastard down, even if I have to die to do it. You see this as a personal insult, don't you? If it's not personal for you, maybe it should be. The people flock to your banner, eager to fight for the Herald of Andraste. Their faith is a leash, and your Inquisition has taken hold of it. Tell me honestly, are you what they say you are? Andraste's chosen. There is so little I remember. What if they're right? Does it even matter? Don't you see what you are to them? Without you, they'd be consumed by despair. We all would. They need you to be Andraste's messenger. It gives them hope. The truth doesn't matter. Ah, uh, listen to me talk. Your time is valuable and I've wasted enough of it. Pride of the stables, Inquisition. Never seen a finer mount. Are your wife and daughter doing well? Elena's minding the farms. Sienna's still running her fool races. Wouldn't be fair to drag them up here. I miss them. But someone has to save the world. How are your charges? Well supplied? Surprisingly well. Not many could feed these people, let alone their mounts. 
Makes me wonder what you're capable of. Heard anything worth noting? Too busy to hear things, and that's how I like it. Farewell. Make her be with you. Lady Inquisitor, Bonnie seems at your service. I trust good secret was not too coarse. Now that you've come to some good fortune, you deserve an upgrade. As master of the tradesmen, I stand ready to supply your every need. How are you doing? Good business? Building. Always building. Thanks to you. Who or what are the tradesmen? A following of sympathetic and profit-minded individuals who promotes local craftsmen and fair importers. A guild of sorts. Although that implies counter affiliations we are not interested in crossing. Our purpose in the Inquisition is legitimate and honorable. You will have what you need at honest prices. Segret survived Haven. Where is he? About. Doing good work for you and yours. But this position is now more desirable. It was time arrangements were made. I shall make every effort to prove that this is an upgrade. What do you bring to the Inquisition? What you need, and more. It takes great coordination to make a remote location seem central. While there is no doubt the boutiques of Valroyo display the grandest of the grand, they do not travel. At least, not yet. Why are you a mere merchant if you're the master of this group? I wish to avoid the suggestion that I am a posturing commander atop a structure of malcontents. It is better to remain active, hands-on. Do you not agree, Inquisitor? We'll speak another time. Of course, Lady Inquisitor. I don't need you, sister. You're carrying a heavy burden for one so young. I'll carry it back to Crestwood and kill those bandits. That's what father would have wanted. He'd want you to live a good life. He's dead. You didn't know him. The order was sent? Yes, Commander. Send men to scout the area. We need to know what's out there. Yes, sir. Commander, soldiers have been assigned temporary quarters. Very good. I'll need an update on the armory as well. Now! We set up as best we could at Haven, but could never prepare for an archdemon, or whatever it was. With some warning, we might have... Do you ever sleep? If Carithia strikes again, we may not be able to withdraw. And I wouldn't want to. We must be ready. Work on Skyhold is underway. Guard rotations established. We should have everything on course within the week. We will not run from here, Inquisitor. How many were lost? Most of our people made it to Skyhold. It could have been worse. Morale was low, but it's improved greatly since you accepted the role of Inquisitor. Inquisitor Lavellan. It sounds odd, don't you think? Not at all. Is that the official response? <laughs> I suppose it is. But it's the truth. We needed a leader, and you have proven yourself. There can be no mistakes this time. I understand. At least we know what we must face. I will do everything I can to ensure the security of our people. You have my word.
Haven was a cock-up, herald, inquisitor. But you did right by me, and others. We'll pay you back. Inquisitor, is there something I can do for you? I should really focus my attention on the injured. I haven't seen you before. The commander brought me up from the refugee camps. I'd been helping the pilgrims in simple ways, setting broken bones, simple amputations and such. We need all the help we can get. You aren't a mage. Shouldn't we let the mage healers deal with this? Magic can't cure everything, and we shouldn't rely on it. Science, your worship, is the way of the future. Good health isn't magic, it's diet, exercise, and a balance of the humors. Do we have many injured men? Fewer by the day. The most grievously injured did not survive the journey to Skyhold. As for the rest, they either heal or... <sighs> I try to make the passing painless. As you were. Your worship. This thing is not a stray puppy you can make into a pet. It has no business being here. Wouldn't you say the same of an apostate? Inquisitor, I wondered if Cole was perhaps a mage, given his unusual abilities. He can cause people to forget him, or even fail entirely to notice him. These are not the abilities of a mage. It seems that Cole is a spirit. It is a demon. If you prefer, although the truth is somewhat more complex. I'm not sure how much more complexity I need, Solus. Indeed, my dear. He may call it whatever he likes, but it is still a threat. In fact, his nature is not so easily defined. Speak plainly, Solas. What are we dealing with? Demons normally enter this world by possessing something. In their true form, they look bizarre, monstrous. But you claim Cole looks like a young man. Is it possession? No. He has possessed nothing and no one. And yet he appears human in all respects. Cole is unique, Inquisitor. More than that, he wishes to help. I suggest you allow him to do so. What do you mean by possession? Spirits and demons cross over from the Fade by attaching themselves to something in this world. But Cole has willfully manifested in human form without possessing anyone. The demons who came through the breach, or through the rifts, weren't possessing anything. These demons were drawn through against their will, driven mad by this world. But Cole predates the breach. From what we can tell, he has lived here for months, perhaps years. He looks like a young man. For all intents and purposes, he is a young man. It is remarkable. I should hear what Cole has to say for himself. Where is he now? If none of us remember him, he could be anywhere. Haven. So many soldiers fought to protect the pilgrims so they could escape. Choking fear. Can't think from the medicine, but the cuts rack me with every heartbeat. Hot, white pain. Everything burns. I can't. I can't. I'm going to... I'm dying. I I'm... Dead. Glad to see you're settling in, Cole. Here I was worried you'd have trouble making friends. Every breath slower. Like lying in a warm bath. Sliding away. Smell of my daughter's hair when I kiss her goodnight. Gone. Cracked brown pain. Dry, scraping, 
thirsty. Here. Thank you. It's all right. She won't remember me. Solus tried to explain what you are, but honestly, I stopped listening after a while. Any chance you could explain it? Yes. I used to think I was a ghost. I didn't know. I made mistakes, but I made friends, too. Then a Templar proved I wasn't real. I lost my friends. I lost everything. I learned how to be more like what I am. It made me different, but stronger. I can feel more. I can help. If you're willing, the Inquisition could use your help. Yes, helping. I help the hurt, the helpless. There's someone. Hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Someone make it stop hurting. Make her, please. The healers have done all they can. It will take him hours to die. Every moment will be agony. He wants mercy. Help. You say he won't die for hours yet. But you can't know that for certain. His body is failing. He could recover. Or the healers could find another way to help him. How do you know? I don't. And neither do you. That's part of life. Try. I want to stay. Maker, you're a mess. Let me have a look at you. Are you all right, my dear? Were you hurt? You look dreadful. You should have seen me an hour ago. We should do something about this dirt. We don't need you frightening the faithful. Let's keep up appearances. You've handled this crisis competently, saving as many lives as you did. But the enemy struck a serious blow against you and the Inquisition. We must recognize that. You must. So many people are joining this fight. What if I'm only leading them to their deaths? Death is a part of war, my dear, and a part of life. We cannot escape it. Those who die for the Inquisition give their lives willingly. The alternative is to forfeit all they cherish to these horrors from the sky. Our enemy advances, Inquisitor. We must not sit idly by. Act first, and teach them to fear us. I think you know what needs to be done, my dear. Have you met this friend of Varric's, Inquisitor? Not yet, no. It had better not be who I think it is. I will wring that little bastard's neck. Why? Who do you think it is? Someone Varric claimed he could not contact. Someone the Inquisition, indeed all of Thedas, desperately needed. I'll reserve judgment until I know for certain. No need to have that rogue screaming persecution yet again. Do you have any advice for me? Tell that demon, what does it call itself? Cole. Tell it to leave. He may not mean harm. But that does not mean he will not harm us. Spirits are not creatures to take at face value. Be cautious with him, Inquisitor. That's enough for now. Another time, then.
fertile ground even here. This hold has everything. Inquisitor, Elan Vimar. Honored to represent the College of Herbalists and offer my services as apothecary. My colleague Adan was clear about the worth of your cause. I look forward to assisting him. I wasn't aware we had requested a replacement for him. Not a replacement. Assistance. With recent... escalations, he asked for help so he could spend his time gathering resources. Which means... the old tosser wanted some garden time. All the mundane needs of Skyhold will be well tended. If you note anything special, let me know. I'm here to serve the cause we must. Ah, Inquisitor, you have finally come into your own. The Maker has put you on a difficult path. I pray you walk it safely. I remember our talk out there before we found Skyhold. It wasn't just the Maker who put me on this path, was it? The Inquisitor could never have been Cassandra, or Leliana, or me for that matter. We are too political too tied to the Chantry and all its failings. But I did not make you stand against Corypheus. I did not make you risk death to save the people of Haven. Only you could be the Inquisitor. I only pray the power of the Inquisition is enough. If the power of the Inquisition isn't enough, we're all in a great deal of trouble. It may seem overwhelming now, but you have already done more than most could have. The Maker has chosen you to deliver us from Corypheus. You have the faith and support of everyone here. Never forget that. Now, was there anything else? Can you tell me anything about Corypheus? I know nothing of the man personally, but the Chant of Light speaks of what he claims to be. No matter all their power, their triumphs, the mage lords of the winter were men and doomed to die. Then a voice whispered within their hearts, shall you surrender your power to time like the beasts of the fields? You are the lords of the earth. Go forth to claim the empty throne of heaven and be gods. That was one of the old gods speaking in their dreams? Yes, Dumat as I understand it. In secret, they worked magic upon magic. All their power and all their vanity they turned against the veil, until at last it gave way. That sounds like what happened with the breach. Very similar, Inquisitor. Above them, a river of light. Before them, the throne of heaven waiting. Beneath their feet, the footprints of the Maker and all around them echoed a vast silence. But when they took a single step toward the empty throne, a great voice cried out, shaking the very foundations of heaven and earth. Corypheus said he found only chaos and corruption. The Chant of Light says that it was beautiful until the Maker himself spoke. And so is the Golden City blackened with each step you take in my hall. Marvel at perfection, for it is fleeting. You have brought sin to heaven and doom upon all the world. Corypheus seemed so certain that he heard nothing. He described it as dead whispers. Bitterness, perhaps? He paid a high price for his crime. Violently were they cast down, for no mortal may walk bodily in the realm of dreams. Bearing the mark of their crime. Walking bodily in the realm of dreams is exactly what Corypheus said he did. But the mark... Could it be related to the mark I bear? I cannot say. Perhaps Andraste saw clearly and we misinterpreted her words. It was always taught that the mark they bore was the shape of Darkspawn. 
Bodies so maimed and distorted that none should see them and know them for men. That is all I know of your adversary, Inquisitor. Thank you for taking the time to share that with me, revered mother. All faithful should recite the chant of light once a week. It would speak ill of me to fall behind. Take what the chant says, but do not be bound by it. A century from now, your own story may be another verse. And who knows how much truth it will hold. Still, I would trust these words over any spoken by Corythius. I hope they help you. Someone emptied a whole bag of turnips into the fire. Ah, oh, make it, the smell is everywhere. I was going to use them for dinner and then... Oh, I can't recall who took them. Honored, Inquisitor. Gotzi Sturhal. Did my part on the walls, and now I'm on this strange collection you've brought us. Don't know it's worth to the fight, exactly, but it's good workmanship. Where did you learn your skills? Orzammar. Carved a few statues in my day. And before you ask, yes, I chose to leave. I carved a paragon who turned out to be a sodding madwoman. Couldn't stand looking at it. The memory of a dwarf, right? Any ideas about the origins of these reliefs? To Vinter, early. It's in the tool marks, the grain. That's hard dust mined from the Hundred Pillars, if I know anything. Oh, I suppose the scene is probably full of Tevinter robes, too. The Hundred Pillars? Damnedest things. Massive spires that aren't stone. It's like a mortar. Don't know more than that. Strong, though. Do you have insight into the stories these tiles are supposed to depict? Here you go, Inquisitor. I wrote up some thoughts. Hope it adds to the effort. this place. So much room for whatever was here. What can I do for you? I need to know more about Corypheus. We spoke of this on our travels to Skyhawk. What more can I tell you? Cassandra and Varric seem more familiar with their adversary. Oh, I'll take advice from just about anyone right now. I'm flattered. I claim no secret wisdom. But I will guess as best I can. I would like to know more about the orb he carries. As I said, that must be the means by which he created the breach. I suspect the blast that destroyed the Conclave was more accident than anything. The result of unlocking power that had sought release for ages. What I cannot understand is how he managed to survive such an explosion. You said that you believed the orb is elven. I never would have believed that a Vinter mage could unlock such a powerful relic. It clearly enhances his abilities, giving him access to power I should never have known. Like the power to control the Archdemon? Indirectly, one assumes. Nothing in any lore connects my people to the old god dragons who became Archdemons. What do you think Corypheus will do next? You shamed him when you destroyed Haven. It spoiled his glorious victory. It would be worse to acknowledge that you had done so. He must continue on his course or show weakness. He will return to his plans to throw Ole into chaos and then conquer it for Devinter. You're sure that's what he'll do? 
As certain as is possible. Assuming I can plausibly predict a man who seeks to rise to godhood. And can you? The key is understanding this. No real god need prove himself. Anyone who tries is mad or lying. His deception will undo him. As it has done countless fools before. What can you tell me about the source of Corypheus's power? According to the law, the ancient magistars of the Vinter received guidance from the old gods. Corypheus commands a false archdemon, a corrupted old god. This suggests he no longer sees himself as their minion. Some of his unique power comes from the corruption of the Blight. The rest may come from the orb he carries. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Brilliant, isn't it? One moment you're trying to restore order in a world gone mad. That should be enough for anyone to handle, yes? Then, out of nowhere, an archdemon appears and kicks you in the head. What? You thought this would be easy? No, I was just hoping you wouldn't crush our village like an anthill. Sorry about that. Archdemons like to crush, you know. Can't be helped. Am I speaking too quickly for you? You don't need to worry about me. I can keep up. Yes, I noticed that. Did you know? Certainly. If you were a slack-jawed yokel, you'd already be dead. I always assumed the Elder One behind the Venatori was a Magister. But this is something else completely. In Tevinta, they say the Chantry's tales of Magisters starting the Blight are just that. Tales. But here we are. One of those very Magisters, a Dark Spawn. Who does the Imperium say started the Blight? You know how it is, not us. They say Dark Spawn were always there. Magisters and the Blight aren't even related. Is that a surprise? No one wants to admit they shit the bed. But if Corypheus is one of the Magisters who entered the Black City and he's Dark Spawn, what other explanation is there? Why does that make you angry? Because the Imperium is my home. I knew what I was taught couldn't be the whole truth, but I assumed there had to be a kernel of it, somewhere. But no, it was us all along. We destroyed the world. Last I checked, the Blights hadn't actually destroyed the world. Not for lack of trying. If they were more clever, they'd have unleashed something that would really do the job. <laughs> no one will thank me whatever happens. No one will thank you either. You know that, yes? That's not why I'm doing this. I knew there was something clever about you. All I know is this. Corypheus needs to be stopped. Men like him ruined my homeland. I won't stand by and let him ruin the world. Oh, and congratulations on that whole leading the Inquisition thing, by the way. Greetings, Inquisitor. 
That is your title now, yes? I admit, I was worried what being conscripted into the Inquisition would mean, but it's not as bad as I feared. We survived the attack on Haven, and this fortress is secure. It's more than most of us have known for a long time. I'm glad you've settled in. It's better than being hunted by Templars for months on end. <laughs> I've been a Grey Warden, Grand Enchanter, leader of a rebellion, and now I am none of those things. Odd where fate takes you, as you're no doubt well aware. You were once a Grey Warden. Mine is an unusual circumstance, Inquisitor. Normally, one is part of the Order until death. But long ago, I found myself stripped of what made me a Warden. They tried to reinitiate me, but nothing worked. Nor could they figure out how it happened. So I was sent to the Circle of Magi, the first Warden ever to be kicked out. <laughs> Quite the achievement. You sound happy about it. Becoming a Warden seemed like a dream when I was first conscripted. Towards the end, however, my brothers and sisters, they felt I had somehow cheated death. I was glad to leave. It also made me unique in the Circle. I had an opportunity to do more than I ever could as a Warden. You mean you began the Mage Rebellion? I pushed for our vote to free the Circles of Magi. But I cannot claim sole responsibility for what followed. Still, despite all the chaos, I would do it again. What happened had to happen. You're not still the Grand Enchanter, then? Any claim I had to the title ended along with the Circles of Magi, although some still call me by it. Perhaps the Circles will one day be resurrected? If so, another will take the position. Until that time, I lead my fellow mages by default. I will do what I can for them. You believe they'll recreate the Circle of Magi after all this? It depends on who the next Divine is, and what she offers. They can't go back to the way things were. But endless warfare benefits no one. That is why I agreed to Justinia's conclave. There must be another solution. I've been meaning to ask, how exactly did the Venatori take control in Redcliffe? Mages constantly found their way to us while we were there. Stragglers, most of them strangers. I had no way of knowing some were actually to winter. They spread whispers, encouraged talk of an alliance, and we were desperate. I'm not proud of our choice, but we were certain Templars were coming. It could have ended of an old woman. Nothing more. Greetings to you, Inquisitor. I am to serve as assistant to any research concerns. You'll find my skills are exceptional. I hope they prove useful. You're taking over the duties of Menave? Yes. She said she was needed elsewhere, and that I should serve the Inquisition to the best of my ability. What is she doing? I wasn't told. You were made tranquil. Yes, I am tranquil. It was necessary due to a willful nature that made wielding magic a dangerous endeavor. I remember that being a difficult time, but I cannot remember why. My skills are well used in my current position. How can you serve the Inquisition? I am to aid in the research of all creatures encountered in your efforts as leader of the Inquisition. What makes you particularly qualified? I remember being fond of animals. I don't remember why. What is your evaluation of how we're doing? Adequate. Based on a partial improvements to Skyhold. As you were? Yes, Inquisitor.
I'm sorry. So am I. The names of those we lost. You must blame me for this. We all saw who attacked us. We know exactly who to blame. I keep wondering if I could have done something different. When the first of my lookouts went missing, I pulled the rest back, awaiting more information. If they'd stayed in the field, they could have bought us more time. I was afraid to lose my agents. And instead, we lost Haven. More likely, they would have stayed out there, died, and we would have lost Haven anyway. You don't know that. Their lives could have bought Haven a small chance. My people know their duty. They know the risks. They understand that the Inquisition may call upon them to give their lives. Our people aren't tools to be used and discarded. Your instincts were right. Their lives matter. Can we afford such sentimentality? What if Corypheus? We are better than Corypheus. You've made such intriguing design choices for the castle, my dear. They must be inspired. Thank you, Vivian. I'm glad you approve. When things have settled down a bit, I will take you to Val Royo and introduce you to my seamstress. And appearances are important. We can't have you mistaken for a commoner. What's wrong with being a commoner? There's nothing wrong with your birth, my dear, but you need to be an inspiration to the people. You command an army of the faithful, outfitted by the coin of the nobility. You must be a woman who commoners aspire to be, and to whom nobles bow. That's quite a lot for one person to pull off, don't you think? It is a challenge all great leaders must face, Inquisitor. The stories of your accomplishments will spread, and with them, doubt. Are you truly the woman from the tales? They will question what they've heard, but they will believe what they see. They must see someone greater than legends. If that's your standard for me, what does the Divine have to live up to? Andraste and the Maker cast very large shadows. The Divine absolutely must set the example for all Thedas. She must seem to be the embodiment of the Maker to the Faithful. She needs the authority of the Maker and the charisma of Andraste. It will be no small task to fill that vacant throne.
better and better. What can't we do in a place like this? Impressive, is it not? Fit for a leader, meant to show influence and the burden of it. It is where the Inquisition will sit in judgment. Where you will sit in judgment. Who will I be judging exactly? Those who have done wrong. You will know of them, at the very least. All this presumes they have survived their initial encounter with you, of course. Still more lives in my hands. You are a beacon of law, Inquisitor, as others retreat from responsibility. But this needn't be bloody. The Inquisition's sovereignty is derived from the allies who validate it. You are both empowered and bound. Justice has many tools. If their application is clever, execution may even seem merciful by comparison. Is there anyone I should judge? Take the throne when you're ready. We will bring him before you. You recall Gerion Alexius of De Winter. Ferelden has given him to us as an acknowledgement of your aid. The formal charges are apostasy, attempted enslavement, and attempt in assassination on your own life, no less. De Winter has disowned and stripped him of his rank. You may judge the former Magister as you see fit. Remind me, what's the precedent for nearly ripping apart time at the seams? I couldn't save my son. Do you think my fate matters to me? Will you offer nothing more in your defense? You've won nothing. The people you saved, the acclaim you've gathered. You'll lose it all in the storm to come. Render your judgment, Inquisitor. Your magic was theoretically impossible, Alexius. I could use people like you. Your sentence is to serve under guard as a researcher on all things magical for the Inquisition. No execution? <sighs> Very well. Inquisitor. I was just inspecting our new headquarters. Foundation cracks, nesting animals, and miles from any centers of civilization. The staff must make it presentable if we're to receive any visitors of distinction. It certainly wouldn't do for the Inquisition to appear... overly shabby. We've only just now convinced everyone we are precisely what Deiras requires. The mages will be gauging the Inquisition's fortitude. They should feel safe here. Do you not feel safe here? I've had... difficulty... forgetting Corypheus' attack on Haven. Do you know who first left to arms? Our workers. They were so proud of our cause. Corypheus simply cut them down. So much screaming after that first blast of fire. So many people turned to ash. We lost far too many good people to that monster. I'm sure they'll find rest with the Maker. Well, before I return to my duties, allow me to congratulate you on your appointment as Inquisitor, my lady. I will now bring diplomatic issues to your attention, and I'm more than happy to help with any situations that arise. I'd be delighted if you could conjure up a marble bath within the next hour. I'll attempt to add that to the list.
How are the rescue efforts? Have they found anyone alive? Excavation is slow, as you can imagine. Let us begin. work. Thank you for Haven. Less so for Redcliffe, but I am committed to serve your worship. Thanks for my life in Haven. You've all sorts serving now. If that means change, that'll be it. Strangest thing. When I reached down, my dagger was gone. Just gone. Now where I found it? In a barrel. The thing was filled to the brim with daggers. Got the strangest feeling. I know someone took it right off my belt, but... Can't recall who. Yes? Is there anything I should know? Repairs to Skyhold's fortifications are progressing. Our scouts report no immediate threats in the surrounding area. We are fortunate Solus knew of this place. That's all for now. Should you require anything, I'll be here. 